In this lesson, we study the derivatives of our six trigonometric functions. So let's start with the derivative of the sine function. If we let f of x equal sine of x, then what we can do is we can say f prime of x will be equal to the limit. And this is using our limit um, definitions. Uh, so the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, sine of x plus h minus sine of x, all of this over h. Now what we want to do is use our sum identity for sine to expand this. So let's go ahead and do that now. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, sine of x times cosine of h plus uh, cosine of x times sine of h, sine of h, uh, minus sine of x. See if I can fit that here on the board here. Minus sine of x there. Barely fit it. All of that over h. All right, let's keep going. Let's move this screen up just a little bit. Now, uh, so f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. All right, there. Um, now look at this numerator. We can group, um, let's see, sine of x, cosine of h. Oops, sorry, cosine of h. Um, we can group that together with sine of x minus sine of x. This is us using the associative property of addition that says we can group our add-ins basically however we want, right? And uh, the sum does not change. Um, I grouped these two together because these two terms have something in common, namely sine of x. So now let's factor out a sine of x. And le this leads us to f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 uh, plus cosine of x times sine of h. And what I would like to do is I would like to uh, write each of these terms over h, right? After all, it is all of this in the numerator divided by h. So that's still what I have. All of this divided by h, all of that divided by h. Um, you know, you could definitely go right back to where we came from because these are two fractions with the same denominator. So this is um, for sure allowed. Um, let's continue. And uh, this is f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. We can write this as sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 over h, right? Um you know, technically, folks, in, in this previous line of work, um, because I have a sum of terms, I know this is a little messy, but technically, um, I should be using a grouping symbol here because you're taking the limit of all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and insert brackets. And then we know that the limit of this sum is equivalent to the sum of the limit. So I'm going to say plus the limit as h approaches 0 of the second expression, which can be rewritten as cosine of x times a sine of h over h. All right, very good. Now, um, this here, let's, let's continue moving this board up. f prime of x is equal to the limit um, as h, actually, let me go back here. You know, this term here, sine of x, this can be pulled out because it's now a con, you know, a constant multiple. So what we can do is we can pull that out because that is not in terms of h at all. So it'll be sine of x times the limit as h approaches zero of cosine of h minus one over h uh, plus, and then we can do the same thing with cosine of x. We can pull that out and say that this is equivalent to cosine of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h 
over age. And what I'm hoping you realize is that we've talked about these important limits before. The limit of cosine of h minus 1 over h as h approaches 0, this is equal to 0. And sine of h over h, uh, the limit of this expression as h approaches 0, is 1. So therefore, this is sine of x times 0 plus cosine of x times 1. So then f prime of x, look at this, folks. f prime of x is simply cosine of x. So what you and I just found is the following. We just found that, and I'm going to change colors here just to make sure this pops out. Uh, for us, the derivative of sine of x is e equal to cosine of x. Isn't that pretty fascinating? This is something that you should maybe box or highlight in your notes. The derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. Okay, now let's find the derivative of cosine of x. And we're going to use a, you know, a similar method. All right, so now we're considering the function cosine of x, and f prime of x, the derivative of the cosine function, will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x all over h. Now let's expand this using the sum identity for cosine. So then the f prime of x will be the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x times cosine of h minus sine of x times sine of h minus cosine of x. Now, when you and I were finding the derivative of the sine function, what we did at this point was we grouped uh, the, some terms together, right? So notice that this term here is cosine of x. And notice this term here has a cosine of x as well. So I'm going to group those terms together using the associative property of addition. All right, very good. I grouped them together. Now, I will say that f prime of x, the derivative of cosine of x, is equivalent to the limit as h approaches 0 of this first term here, uh, I'll write it as uh, cosine of x. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. All right. I'm going to factor out cosine of x, which leaves me with cosine of h minus 1 uh, minus sine of x times sine of h. And what I'm going to do at, at the same step is I'm going to put each of these terms over h. Okay, folks? Technically, I need some um, grouping symbols. So I'm going to use some brackets here. I'm finding the limit of all of this. All right. So the derivative of cosine of x, so f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as cosine of x times cosine of h minus 1 over h minus the limit as h approaches 0 of the second expression, which I will write as sine of x times sine of h over h. Now, we already talked about um, these important limits here, um, this one here. We know uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is 0. And we know that, the, that sine of h over h, the limit of that expression as h approaches 0, is 1. And so we can say that f prime of x will be equal to cosine of x times 0 minus sine of x times 1, which simplifies to negative sine of x. So look at that, folks. We just found the derivative of the cosine function. So let's write this down. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. That's very good. All right, let's box that in our notes. Let's always remember that. Very good. All right, now let f of x equal tangent of x. Now, 
Um, by a quotient identity, we know that tangent of x is equivalent to sine of x over cosine of x. So when I find the derivative of the tangent function, f prime of x, that is to say, then we are finding the derivative of this quotient, sine of x, over cosine of x. Now, because it's a quotient, we can use the quotient rule. The quotient rule will say that the derivative is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Now, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Now, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. All this over the denominator squared. So this simplifies to cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x in the numerator over cosine squared of x in the denominator. Now this in the numerator is probably your most basic Pythagorean identity, which is equal to 1. So then all of this is equal to 1 over cosine squared of x, you know. And by a reciprocal identity, we know that 1 over cosine squared of x is equal to secant squared of x. So what you and I just found, folks, is that the derivative of the tangent function is equal to secant squared of x. All right, that's fantastic. All right, now let's go to cotangent, which is going to be very, very, very similar. Okay, now we're considering the cotangent function. And like I did for tangent, I would like for us to consider that the cotangent of x is equivalent to cosine of x over sine of x. That's using a quotient identity. All right, so then the derivative of the cotangent function that is to say, f prime of x, will be equivalent to the derivative of this quotient. And once again, we can use the quotient rule to find this derivative. So the quotient rule says that the derivative will be sine of x, that's the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator. Now the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Now the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. All of this over the denominator squared. All right, let's start simplifying. So then this is equal to negative sine squared of x uh, minus cosine squared of x all over sine squared of x. I think what we want to do here is factor out a negative from the numerator. And if we do that, we end up with sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. And um, this in the numerator is that same Pythagorean identity that we mentioned a, a minute ago. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. So then this is simplifies to negative 1 over sine squared of x. And by its reciprocal identity, we know that this is equivalent to negative cosecant squared of x. So in conclusion, the derivative of the cotangent of x is e equal to negative cosecant squared of x. Isn't that awesome? So again, I think you should be writing these down uh, really neatly in your notes, highlighting them maybe even, and um, that way you can always reference them. All right, we found the derivative of four out of six functions. Let's go for the last two, the secant function and the cosecant function. Let's start with, um, I don't know, let's start with the cosecant or how about the secant function? Let's start with secant. Okay, folks, the first thing I did was wrote, I, I wrote secant of x in terms of its reciprocal identity, which is 1 over cosine of x. Now, f prime of x will be equal to the derivative of this quotient, 
1 over cosine of x. All right, very good. So we're going to use the quotient rule now. And the derivative of this, of this quotient will be equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. And the derivative of 1 is 0 minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. And all of this is happening over the square of the denominator. All right, let's simplify this. So then this in the numerator is just negative, I'm sorry, positive, right? Sine of x over cosine squared of x, which can be simplified as, uh, let's see, sine of x over cosine of x times 1 over cosine of x which is equal to tangent of x times secant of x by a quotient and a reciprocal identity. So then we're done with that one. That was fast, right? So what we just found was that the derivative of the secant function is equal to um, secant of x times tangent of x. Only one last one to find, and that is the cosecant, the derivative of cosecant. Let's do it now. All right, you know the drill. We wrote cosecant in terms of its reciprocal, which is 1 over sine of x. And so if f prime of x is equal to the derivative of this quotient. All right, so let's do it, folks. There. All right. So then it is equal to, by the quotient rule, the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So then the derivative of cosecant of x will be equal to uh, negative cosine of x over sine squared of x, which we can write as negative cosine of x over sine of x times 1 over sine of x, which is equal to negative cotangent of x times cosecant of x, again by a reciprocal and a quotient identity. So in conclusion, this is the last one. The derivative of cosecant of x is equal to negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x. And we did it. We found the derivatives of all six trigonometric functions. Great job. All right, let's um, practice now finding some derivatives. So um, we're, we are given y is equal to x squared minus sine of x, and what we want to do is find the derivative. That is to say we want to find y prime, okay? Um, so I can write y prime, or I can say dy dx. So dy dx, that is to say the derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to, now it will be the derivative of x squared, which we know is 2x, minus, and then the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, right? Um, and we use the difference rule here to say that the derivative of this difference will be equivalent to the difference of their derivatives, right? So we went ahead and just found the derivative of each term. Isn't that great? All right, cool. Let's um, look at another one. That one's done already. All right, now we have y is equal to x squared times sine of x. Let's find the derivative um, of y with respect to x. So dy dx, we could have written just y prime. Um, now this is going to require the product rule. How do we know that? Well, because this is a product. It's x squared times sine of x. So it's definitely the product rule. So it'll be the... Uh, derivative of x squared, which is 2x, times sine of x, plus x squared times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. Okay? And um, 
yeah, that's it. I'm looking at this expression thinking to myself, can I simplify? I mean, I could factor out an X, but that doesn't really help me that much. So um, we're done. Let's look at another one. All right, Y is equal to sine of X over X. Um, so we're going to find dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, and it will be equal to, now, this is a quotient, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So um, it'll be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, and all of that over uh, the denominator squared. So then this is just x times cosine of x minus sine of x all over x squared. All right, cool. Good job. How about this one? Now we have uh, a function in terms of cosine, right? So uh, dy dx. So find the derivative of y with respect to x. Now the derivative of this sum will be equivalent to the sum of the derivatives. So we want to find the derivative of 5x, which is just 5, plus, and then the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So we should simplify this a little bit just by writing this as 5 minus sine of x. Awesome. All right, check this one out. y is equal to sine of x times cosine of x. This is a product, so we need the product rule. So this is dy dx, okay? The derivative of y with respect to x. All right, so this will be the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x, times cosine of x, plus sine of x, times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. So then this is cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. I hope that's clear for you. All right, good job. Let's look at, um, and be careful, this is not equal to 1. This would be equal to 1 if this were addition, so be careful. All right, very good. All right, new one. Y is equal to cosine of x. Um, over 1 minus sine of x. So this is a quotient, so we need the quotient rule. All right, so here we go. dy dx, folks, the derivative of y with respect to x, will be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Now, the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, but because of this negative, it will be negative cosine of x. All right. All of this over the square of the denominator, like that. All right, so let's see if we can simplify this a bit. So then this is equal to uh, negative sine of x plus sine squared of x, and that was from distributing negative sine of x, right, like this. I want to distribute negative cosine of x, or I just want to multiply, excuse me. So I just want to multiply. Um, so this is plus cosine squared of x all over. I want to leave the denominator as 1 minus sine of x quantity squared. Um, now, this numerator up here, uh, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. So then this is uh, 1, I'm going to write the 1 first, and then minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x squared. So then after some simplification here, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus sine of x. Isn't that great? Good job. All right, look at this new example. Let y equal secant of x. They want us to find the second derivative. Find y double prime. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So we know that y is equal to secant of x. That's what's given, okay? Now, we already did the work, folks. We know that y prime, or dy dx, is equal to secant of x 
times tangent of x. That's the first derivative. And we already proved that, right? So what they want us to find is y double prime. So we have to find the derivative again. So it'll be y double prime, and it'll be the derivative of this product. This is the product. So then we're going to need the product rule here, all right? So it'll be the derivative of secant of x. Now, the derivative of secant of x is secant x times tangent of x, right? So then this is secant of x um, times tangent of x. Oh, this might be confusing. Okay, so this right here that I wrote is just the derivative of secant of x. And what I need to do is I need to multiply that by tangent of x, okay? All right, plus secant of x times the derivative of tangent of x, which is secant squared of x. All right, I hope you followed that. That was the, that was the product rule that I just used, okay? All right, so then this is um, secant cubed of x. That's this last term uh, back here on that side. Uh, secant cubed of x uh, plus uh, secant of x times tangent squared of x. So this is y double prime. All right, to wrap this lesson up, we're going to evaluate this limit. And the this limit involves trig functions. Now, um, the fact that our trig functions are differentiable throughout their domain implies that they are also continuous at every point in their domains. And we know that from our earlier studies as well um, of trigonometry. So what we can do is we can use direct substitution here as long as we do not divide by zero. Because if we end up dividing by zero, then we have something undefined, right? So we can use direct substitution to evaluate the limit of our of these trig functions here as long as this denominator is not zero. All right, so let's see. All right, so then this is equal to, now I'm, I'm attempting to use direct substitution, uh, 2 plus secant of 0, this is direct substitution, um, over cosine of pi minus tangent of 0. All right, so um, this is equal to the square root of 2 plus, now the secant, uh, secant of 0 is just the reciprocal of cosine of 0, right, because they're reciprocal functions. Cosine of 0 is 1, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So then this is 1 all over cosine of pi minus, now tangent of 0 is 0. All right, good. So then continuing to simplify, this limit is equal to uh, the square root of 3 in the numerator over cosine of, oh, just pi. So then this is root 3 over, and then cosine of pi is negative 1. So good thing this denominator is not 0. So we were able to use just direct substitution. And this limit, the limit of this trigonometric expression here, um, using just direct substitution as x approaches 0 is negative root 3. Awesome.